Well, hello, buddy. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Beautiful day today. Decided to do a live stream. We got Mike out there. You're number one as far as the first person on here. Nice to see you. Um, beautiful day today. Got a wedding to go through tomorrow. My friend Kevin, and uh, going to be real busy today. I've got two fans that broke, and I found that there is a uh, place to get fans repaired. So I think the salt air just kind of eats them up. And so one of them's only like, you know, a couple of months old and just died on me. So I'm going to take them to the fan repair shop, get them fixed, and uh, take care of that. Got to try and pick up the baby's birth certificate. We'll see how that goes. I don't know how long you'll stay in line to, to do that. But uh, going to get that done. Then we got to do the baby's Philippine passport. Then we got to do uh, record the birth. Then we got to get an American passport, American Social Security number. Just all these things. I try not to think about it all. Just kind of do it step by step by step. So anyway, never stops, you know, constantly, constantly busy. People ask me if I get bored, and I, I don't get bored. I don't have time to get bored. Too many things to take care of, especially when you've got a family. James Thorson, Mark, congratulations. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been getting a little bit easier, you know. I mean, all comes back to me. You think about being an old guy like me, you wake up in the middle of the night like 10 times to take a pee anyway. So. It's no big deal waking up with the baby crying. So um, he's been doing better, though. He's sleeping more and more during the night and less and less during the day. So it's, you know, we actually had a good night's sleep last night. So it's all working out. It's amazing how many diapers you go through. You know, I was thinking that I was going to be um, environmentally friendly and use cloth diapers and wash them and everything. That ain't going to work. We would have like piles and piles of diapers if we did that. So Stanley, hello. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, uh, nice day here. I don't think I'll be going anywhere soon for a while. People get, people keep asking me, where are you going to, where's your next trip going to be? We have to go to Cebu for, uh, my 13 ABs. I got to go to, um, Manila for the baby's, uh, passport and, uh, get that sorted out. So those are the only trips I'm going to be taking aside from that. We'll be staying home. Uh, hey, Stanley Hustle Goodman. Hello. Nice to see you. Hey, have you guys, uh, wherever you are in America or the Philippines, have you heard about shrinkflation? Where, you know, they charge you the same amount for things, but the packaging keeps getting smaller. I've been noticing that here in the Philippines, that these packages are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You buy, say, a pack of chips, a bag of chips, and, you know, it's like this big. When you open it up, it's just like, you know, maybe about 15% of the bag is full. The rest of it is empty. Gregory, thank you. It's real. Well, look at this. Would you believe that this is a can of Coke? Look at my hand. Look how small that is. And I don't have that big of hands. That is a can of Coke. Tiny. Tiny looks like it for a dollhouse, you know. It's uh, how many ounces is this? Um, it's 180 milliliters, whatever the hell that is. So anyway, yeah, it doesn't even fill up. Like my smallest glass it doesn't even fill up the whole glass. You need to put ice in there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's real. You same here, Las Vegas. Hey, Las Vegas. I love Vegas. I lived in St. George, Utah for 15 years. I took my ex-wife to Vegas almost every weekend for three years. We'd always go on a Sunday. And back then, this is in the uh, late 90s, early thousands, and you could get rooms really cheap down there. We'd stay at MGM Grand, Luxor, Treasure Island. Stayed there a lot for like you know 50, 60 dollars a night, right on the strip. 50 grams of sugar, sure. How many, I don't know how many grams of sugar. Let's see um, if I can read this. It's so small. It doesn't even show. It's so tiny, it doesn't even show um, how much sugar is in there. Probably just a couple grains. Yeah, but it costs more than to produce. The producers have to charge more. Yeah, it's like... It must cost about the same to make this little tiny can as a big can. And how much more can Coke cost, you know, to make, you know? I mean, it's just like, I don't know. It's just like ripping people off. And then the other cans they got here, and they look like it's the same size, but they're real skinny now. They're skinny and tall. They changed the whole thing. What about works for like that they have vending companies, they have vending machines, and like all these cans don't fit in there anymore because they're, they're too small. 222 millimeter for a mini Coke here. Still outrageous prices, yeah. Mark, how has Dumaguete changed since you arrived? That's a good question, J.D. Um, it's gotten better as far as the roads especially. That's the big thing. Number one thing is the roads. When I first got here, bad roads everywhere. 
And uh, the uh, road that leads down to my house, of course, is a dirt road. But uh, the net, we're on National Highway. And National Highway was to I mean, you couldn't really call it a highway. It was just an as asphalt road, potholes in it, you know, and no lines. Just really bad road. Now it's a beautiful, like you'd see in another country. It's got the cat size in it, the nice lines on it. It's beautiful to drive on. It's not the whole highway, though. It's only about maybe 10 miles and then it goes back to like less and less and the funny thing is it's like they expanded the highway from two lanes to four right and when they expanded the highway there was uh, power poles you know in the lanes they just left them there you go to the right lane and there's a power pole in the middle of the right lane and they just put the asphalt and everything right around it and they put they painted yellow stripes on the pole so people don't crash into it and they did that all over Dumaguete, everywhere. It's like you see the new, the new expanded highway, but you're driving the right lane. All of a sudden, there's a power pole right in the middle of the lane. So crazy, you know. But that is the Philippines. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Tony, what have you heard about expats using Charles Schwab when uh, lost benefits that sticks out as they reimburse you on the ATM fees? Yeah, it's great. I've been using Charles Swaps for uh, four years now, and you get your ATM piece back. It's great. So um, I take out, you know, $200 at a time, and it works out fine for me. I've been doing it for a while. Eventually, I might do that transfer-wise thing, but I just it's just easy to go to the ATM if it's not costing you anything, and the fees are okay. So I just take it out of the ATM and uh, transfer from my PNC account to my, my Charles Schwab account. With Charles Schwab, though, you must have an American address, though. Uh, my friend David, uh, who was uh, an, used to be an attorney, um, he's got uh, an American mailing address. There's these real addresses you can get, and they, they get all your mail. They scan it for you and email it to you and then shred it. And uh, it's a legal, actual, real address. And so you can use that for Charles Schwab. But if you don't have a, an actual, real address where you can receive mail in America, Charles Schwab will close your account. They don't just do it instantly. They they call you up first, talk to you, then they'll, they'll close your account. So um, you want to make sure you maintain an address. Like I'm using my mother's now, but eventually I'm going to have to do what my friend David did and get a proper uh, proper address. We will keep you in your prayers. Well, thank you, Sammy. I appreciate that. Um, I had I usually put honey in my iced tea. You know the regular little honey things at the top you know, that you buy in the store? And I was going to make my tea yesterday, and Jiggles, there's ants in there. I couldn't see them. I look, and sure enough, even though it's closed, somehow those little tiny, tiny ants had gotten inside the honey. I don't know how they do it, so I had to throw the whole thing away. Tony, I meant to say that one benefit that sticks out is they reimburse you. Yeah, you're right. That is a big benefit. Uh, I like Charles Schwab. They have great customer service. You can call them <clears throat> any time of day or night. I had, um, I couldn't get in my account one time. Like they, they, um, every once in a while, they want to verify who you are. And you can hear the baby cry in the background, but Jen's with him. Um, they want to verify who you are, and so you, they send you like a code. And for some reason, the code wouldn't work, or I couldn't get it to work. And then after somebody tries, it locks your account. So I got on the phone, called up, got right through to someone. They sorted it right out for me, and five minutes later, I was back online. But they re they really have good customer service at Charles Schwab. Hey, Chester, nice to see you. Chester was on my show not long ago. Really interesting guy. Check him out. Jonathan, greetings from Germany. Happy to catch a live stream. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, my good friend uh, Steven's over in Germany right now. His mother is German, and he's going to be there for two weeks, comes back on Sunday. I like Germany. I've been there a couple times. I've been to Hamburg. I was there back in the 1980s and uh, had the whole day off working on a cruise ship. Didn't have anything to do. And I went and saw Cats on their version of Broadway in Hamburg. And it was that's when it first came out. And it was a spectacular show, of course, in German. I didn't understand a word of it. Uh, let's see. Sammy, the power pole on the road is due to slower speeds than the USA and the fact that a lot of uh, vehicles are motorcycles or scooters. Yeah, but still, I mean, if you're going to spend the money to put in a brand new lane and a highway, I mean, move the damn poles. I mean, really. Uh, let's see. Um, did they put in this grocery store in the market building? No, they didn't. I mean, we, Jen just went over there, as a matter of fact, but they built this. New market, brand new place over there. We went over there to check it out, and there's nothing there. They got a bakery, a, a handyman store, and a coffee shop. It's way upstairs, little tiny place with no air conditioning, and that's it. 
There's nothing there. It's all empty. Nobody's rented the spaces out. I don't think we're going to get a grocery store there. And then speaking of grocery stores, Robinson's, our one and only big mall here. There's one at Lee Plaza too, but Robinson's is the main mall here. And for almost two years now, they've they walled off a whole side of it, put up these great big plastic banners that are like 10 feet tall and 20 feet wide, and they go for like you know several hundred year hundred yards from the parking garage all the way to the the rear entrance of the mall. Coming soon, this and that. Coming soon, you're gonna love it. It's great, and uh, changed the whole entrance. You know, made it all really ugly. If walk through a tunnel to get in there, you know, and closed up a bunch of shops that were already there. And so you go up to the parking garage where you can actually see over this big wall they 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 put up, so you can't see what's going on. And there's like 20 acres, and there's absolutely nothing going on. It's just dirt. There's no construction, no trucks, no nothing. And it's been that way for two years. So big signs out front. Yeah, coming soon. Great new remodeled mall. It's going to be fantastic, but there's nothing there. And it's the same thing with our airport. I don't think we're ever going to get the international airport. They said they were going to put it when I moved here five years ago. So, yeah, they built this place in Bacong. We thought, oh, we're so excited about it. So this is going to be great. We'll have, maybe have some good shopping right here in Bacong and not have to go into Dumaguete or go to the mall. But, nope, there's nothing there. Uh, let's see. Schwab acquired Think or Swim, the best trading platform on the planet. I didn't know that. I knew they took over uh, E-Trade because I have an account with E-Trade. Now it's with Charles Schwab, which is fine with me. Let's see. They just had some really bad flooding in Dubai. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. They should move the poles, but it's a lack of funding issue. They seem to have a lot of funding for roads, though. They're putting in roads everywhere. So, yeah, going back to the question about things have changed. Yeah. The um, big, big thing is the infrastructure. The internet's got a little bit better. The power goes out a lot less now than it did when I moved here. When I lived up in Valencia when I first moved up there. I was trying to tutor English online, and like every week, you know, at least once or twice a week, the power would go out. I'd be online talking to a student. Boom, no power, no internet. And the company, you know, in San Francisco, the the computers that run this whole uh, tutoring English program. We just assume you just hung up on the on the student and they would just block you from working for like four days. So it was really, really a pain in the ass. So, but now it's much better here. And of course, you know, what I'm doing now, if the internet goes out, I just wait till it comes back. Um, Sammy, Germany has world class, uh, world class passenger train service that you can't find in most countries. Yeah, all of Europe's got that. I mean, the trains in Europe are fantastic. They run on time, they're nice, they're clean. Um, I went on one, God, years ago, in uh, it's early 2000 in Italy, and I went to Cittivici all the way to Rome, and I bought a ticket for like, it's like 40 euros, and it was good for like months, and you can just hop on any train, get right on, nobody even checked your ticket, nobody even looks your ticket, you just walk on the train, get on, boom, take you off, and they got these big buses, double-decker buses in Rome, and uh, they go all around Rome, they give you a free set of headphones, and uh, you get on there, and I used to sit on the top. It's open air on the top. And they're going all around Rome. So you go to the Colosseum, you put on these headphones, you dial your language. There's like every language you can imagine there. You just turn the dial to it hits your language. And it's telling you where you are. And then you see someplace you want to want to stop, like say the Colosseum or the Vatican. You just hop off, spend as much time as you want, get off, get on another bus and, and go wherever you want to go. But the transportation systems in all of Europe is far, far superior to what they've got in America. I mean, not even close. Like I've taken the, the, the train from uh, London all the way to Paris to go to Euro Disney, you know, it's fantastic. So anyway, yeah, we need that. Of course, in the Philippines, you got tricycles and jeepneys. Uh, TD Productions, uh, congratulations to you and your wife. Thank you. And I guess TD Productions might be a YouTube channel, so check him out. Adrian, nice to see you, my friend. Hey, Mark, trust you and Jen and Rogan are doing well. Hope to see you soon, brother. All the best. Yeah, things are going great, Adrian. Really appreciate it. Uh, Germany was the first country to have limited access highways or freeways or motorways. Interesting. And of course, they got the Autobahn where you can drive as fast as you want. I mean, I've never been uh, much into speed. You know, like I've had some really fast cars. Um, like my last uh, my car before, I had an Infiniti FX45 V8, you know, tons of power. Before that, I had a Mitsubishi 3000 GT. I had two of those, a red one and a white one. They were really fast cars. But I just never. I like driving, you know, on beautiful roads like they have in Utah through the canyons and, you know, going a little bit fast, but I never like going like crazy fast. 
scary fast. This doesn't do anything for me. Uh, funny mention Italy this morning. Oops. Sammy says, but this morning I watched on YouTube video on Pompeii volcanic disaster. It was really bad the way they, they would have surged the volcanic ash, bury the whole city. I've been to Pompeii several times. I've actually got a book on it in my room over there. Yeah, I've been there several times. It's an amazing thing to see. Amazing, you know, uh, to walk around the city. It's so well preserved. And uh, there's, a, you know, what's interesting about Pompeii? It was a very decadent city. There were lots of brothels there. And you would know where the brothels were because there was a, a big penis carved into the sidewalk pointing to where the brothel was. And you go inside there and they had a, a mural on the wall, like a menu of all the things you could get in the brothel. But yeah, a very interesting place. I like Italy a lot. I've been to Vatican many times too. I've gotten all the way down to, to the catacombs of the Vatican where the, the popes are entombed. And I've also been way up in the, in the top of the Vatican there where the dome is. Um, Loopy Dillo, hi Mark. Hope you are all well. Hope Rogan is settling in and he likes his his cut is hot. I may be visiting the Philippines in early October. What is the weather like in the Philippines in October? Um, it's nice. I mean, right now it's probably the hottest day of the year. I mean, hottest month of the year. Um, the only months out of when I can't tell you what they are yet. To Google it, but. The months where the pollen is bad here, and I didn't realize what was happening. If you see some of my older videos, especially when I was over at Big Rock, I'm doing a video, and uh, my eyes are just all red and puffy and just like a slit. And I couldn't figure out what was wrong. I thought I had. I went to an eye doctor. They said you had dry eye. It was pollen. Like I'm not, my my body's not used to the pollen here. I remember when I lived in Utah, same thing. The cedar pollen. The locals, it doesn't bother them because they were born there and they're used to it. But for me, it's like you're used to this. Just my sinuses, my eyes, and everything. I didn't realize what it was, but it was the pollen. And now I'm getting a little bit better. It doesn't affect me as much as it did when I first moved here. But there's some videos I did, and my eyes are just literally swollen shut and just running all day long, and I couldn't figure out what the hell was wrong with me. Anyway, don't come during those months. TD Productions, yes, we are. Uh, check us out. We do videos about expats all over the world. Okay, so check out TD Productions. Maybe we can do a... Uh, a live stream interview sometime. Would you like to do that? Or I can interview you over, over uh, StreamYard? So if you would, send me an email, markfthorntonyahoo.com. My email is in all of my videos in the description down by my PayPal. It just says markfthorntonyahoo.com. And maybe we can get together and do a, a live stream video. And we can talk about your channel. Chester, Philippine to US dollar about 50, above 57. Possibly rise to 58. Economy of Philippines growing fast prices. Next to rise. Yeah, um, I know some of the newer apartments here that are coming on the market are very expensive compared to what they used to be. I had a friend of mine paying like 47000 for a two-bedroom, which is crazy. Um, but a lot of the places that I have lived before, like Big Rock and Dulce Vida, their prices are pretty much the same now as they were five years ago. But, you know, that's where you save the most money in the Philippines is, in, uh, is on rent. Gas is probably more expensive here than in most places, you know, probably comparable to California, maybe even more than that. Um, electricity is very expensive here, uh, which is, doesn't make sense since it's geothermal. you think that would be cheap electricity, but it's not. Um, and food, of course, depends on what you buy. If you buy Filipino food, it's not bad. You know, but if you're buying, you want to buy steak, you know, or American-made products, you're going to pay a fortune for it. Do you like uh, Philippine National Band? I don't understand what you mean. What is National Band? I don't know what that is. Oh, National Bank. Um, I don't know that bank. I haven't used it. I've got two bank accounts here, um, and, but I don't use them that much. You know, I do have two bank accounts. One is just basically for Jen to keep her money in. Uh, Philippines is basically just a wet season, dry season. That's right. I agree. That's what it is. Actually, I'm coming to uh, Versailles in June. We'd love to meet up. Yeah, great. Meet up with me, and we'll do some videos and promote your channel and uh, do some interviews. Yeah, for sure. Look me up. Happy to meet with you. Um, hi, Mark. How is the power situation? Duma NGCP has issued red alerts in Region 6. I'm curious how things are there. I don't even know what a red alert is. Um, it's getting better, man. It's like... Uh, the worst, of course, was during the typhoon. During the typhoon, we had no power for 10 days. 
and the owner of this property bought bought a big generator that powers up the whole property and so you turn it on you know for several hours a day so that was good and if the power's out for um when they have these planned brownouts and we're out for the whole day they'll turn the, the uh, generator on so we'll have uh, power during the afternoon um but it's gotten less and less and they don't seem to last as long like the other night the power went out and it was gone for like maybe 20 minutes came back on so it's getting better. I'd just say it's getting better. You just kind of get used to it here. It's just, you know, that's just the Philippines. At least it is here. I'm sure if you're in Dumaguete, uh, not Dumaguete, in uh, BGC or uh, Manila, you don't have to worry about it. Cebu doesn't have very many power outages either. Arlene, nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, basically, you know, everything everything is good there. Um, but, yeah, and also people talk about health care. I've had quite a few friends of mine end up in the hospital recently. And uh, they were sorted out. My friend Charlie was in there with typhoid, and uh, they sorted him out. Um, I had other friends find a lot of motorcycle accidents, things like that. They always seem to get taken care of. Um, of course, Jen had her C-section. She was fine. Another friend of mine's wife had a C-section. She was fine. Um, so, you know, the hospital care here is good. If you're going to have like a hip replacement or bypass surgery or something like that, you want to go to Manila to like uh, St. Luke's or maybe even to to Thailand um, to have that done or back to your home country. So it's, uh, you know, but I've been really happy with the medical care here. And it's just so inexpensive. Like when you go to the doctor in America, you know, it costs so much money, everything, you know. And here, you know, you can see a doctor for 10 bucks. You can see a dentist for 10 bucks. Um, let's see. Um, Paul and Leica, I'm considering a Chimes made from coke and diesel four by four pickup there 23,000 us you send many of them around um yeah i've seen a couple of those yeah we're getting more and more i got a chinese car i've got the uh geely cool ray which is just a great car one of the best cars i've ever owned actually um it's they own uh they own uh, volvo they own austin martin they own uh part of mercedes chrysler and uh a couple other companies too. It's a really great car with great, great, uh, really good technology. Oh, baby's upset. Uh, Tony, wait, would it be fair to say the rents drop considerably in price as you move into the provinces? What have you heard on rent prices? Yeah, you're right about that, for sure. Um, I just talked to someone recently who got a really nice house, two bedroom house with a pool, and they're paying like less than $300 a month. Um, so yeah, we eventually go, no, I would never go back to uh, ground zero ever. No matter if they call me and beg me, I would never go back there. No, 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 no. I brought thousands of dollars of business there, free advertising. And, uh, they basically stabbed me in the back, just like, you know, my, my two friends did. So no, would never go there again, ever. Um, if I go to a coffee shop now, I go to, I like Bo's coffee. They're small, but they've got good coffee and really nice pastries. I used to go to Tom and Tom's. That's where Paul likes to go, which is a nice coffee shop on the boulevard, but they don't have any pastry. I like to have something sweet with my coffee, like a piece of cake or pie or something or a donut. They don't have that there. And so that's why I don't go there. But the pose is nice. They used to have a really nice pose at the mall. And when COVID came, they shut it down. They never opened it back up. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, Sammy, in the Philippines, is it hard to find ham, lettuce? It is. It's hard, not how you can find lettuce and potatoes, no problem. But ham, I've never seen kale. But ham is hard to find there, I guess, because there are lots of pigs. But I think in order to make ham, you have to cure it in a cold climate. And so, yeah, can't find good ham here at all. Forget about it. How do you spell the name of your car? Okay, G E E L Y, Geely. Great car. I mean, I just love it. And the thing about these Chinese cars, not just Geely, but the other ones, is uh, China's government subsidizes manufacturers, and they're doing that so they can obviously dominate the market. And these cars are very popular in Saudi Arabia and also in England. And um, so basically you're getting a car that they sell them at basic cost. So you get a car with all this technology in it. Like I've got a camera that videos constantly, automatically recording everywhere I go. I've got four cameras all the way around. So it shows you turn your left turn signal. It shows you what's on the left side of the car. Sensors all the way around the car, incredible sound system, um, cool seats, all kinds of cool stuff. And so, um, anyway, you know, it's all, it's all good. I really like it. Really like it a lot. Uh, let's see. 
Try not to miss anybody here. Okay, here we go. Tony Schwab is uh, great. Highly recommended. It's happy for you and Jen. Thank you so much. William Carter. Mark, we're on uh, rational brownouts here, meaning off and on electricity for 12 hours a day. Wow. Because the energy reserves are low. Hannah Isle is suffering. Red alert means rational Lana. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, you Lashawn instead of ham, it's not the same. It doesn't even taste the same. I don't I don't like Lashawn at all. I don't like it. It's um I just do not like it at all. I mean it just has no flavor to me. And anytime you go to a party, you go to a party, they've got Lashawn, you know, and I don't like it. You hear what it's like to have a baby in the house. <laughs> oh, John Irving. Tony Wade's question. I live in Teresa Rosal, which is closer to the province than most. I pay about $100 a month for a one bedroom place that is brand new. Teresa's just east of Antipala. Wow. $100 a month for a one bedroom. That's incredible. Hmm. Yeah, there are deals out there. There's one guy I interviewed not too long ago. He's got a YouTube channel, he's got a place he's paying $68 a month for. Is a fixer up or unfurnished, you know, he fixed it up and stuff, but you know, he's renting for sixty-eight dollars a month. Bose coffee, my favorite go-to home brewing coffee. I prefer daily. Yeah, that's good. I'm a coffee guy, I really like my coffee. Water temperature in the ocean. That's the thing. I was in uh, Miami for six weeks uh, before I came here. I rented a place on Collins Avenue, right on the beach. It was in January. And the water was too cold to swim in, in January in Florida. Um, and so, um, you know, here, the water temperature is the same year round. It's, I, I can't tell you what it is, but it's just perfect temperature for swimming year round. I'm out there every day, sometimes an hour, two hours in the water. I just, I just I stand there until my fingers get all wrinkled, and then I have to get out. Um, let's see. Uh, I think the lemongrass they put in the Lashon is why I don't care for it either. I just, I don't know. It just does nothing for me. I don't like it. Uh, Pampangana, Philippines. Okay, I've never been there. I love your live chats. Keep doing them. Thank you, Tony. I'm going to probably have to wrap this one up, guys, because you can see Rogan's kind of upset in the background. I'm leaving Jen to look after him. So I got to do my daddy duty and go out back there and see if I can find a way to soothe his cries. I got an interview this afternoon, somebody I've never met before, messaged me, so I'll be doing that this afternoon. I'll have it up tonight. Uh, if you want to be on the show, just contact me, markfthorneyahoo.com, emails in all my videos, and happy to meet you, have a cup of coffee, or uh, perhaps do an interview if you want. And uh, I read all my emails and uh, try and respond to them all. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you for subscribing, and we'll see you next time. Bye.